she would have half of what the record of triple doubles is in the WNBA. Look, on a cool, if they let Caitlin play like how she played this last game, y'all might want to start considering talking about her in the MVP race. Oh, no. This fool is tripping. I'm out of here. You on your own there, bro. Hold on. Hey, yo, what up? It's your boy Chocolate with the Sexy Body. Welcome to a new episode of Chocolate Plays. We back. We back. You know what we're talking about? Kayla Clark. We're talking about Kayla Clark. Got reaction video. Great weekend. Great victory. I didn't do a video. I did a live. And if you didn't catch that live, yo, it's on the channel. And if you are new to the channel, right? If you're new to this thing, man, and you're not a part of Chocolate Crew, hit that subscribe button for your boy. Hit that like button, hit that notification bell so you know when your boy drop videos. And in the comment section, let me know where you're from. Let me know where you're watching this from. If you're new to the channel, if you haven't responded to that, that question that I asked. Because I, I like to engage with my commenters. I'm from Houston, Texas. Home of the Texans. Home of the Astros. World Series Astros. And I don't care what y'all feel about them cheating. People, people cheat all the time. But enough of that. Look, y'all just need to go ahead and give Caitlyn the rookie of the year. I don't want to hear no more talk about her being close to Angel. Oh, and if y'all are, are, are wondering what's going on, everybody know about the dog, Devontae. Devontae wanted to make an appearance, so I went ahead and suited and booted him up. Look, he is ready. He is ready. He's a Clark fan. I ain't going to lie to y'all. This dog don't like nothing on him. <laughs> he don't like nothing on him at all. So the fact that he's wearing his jersey really amazes me. <laughs> He, he trying to take everything off. You should see his damn collar. That shit's all chewed up. My wife bought him a hat. You can't keep that on him. I, I bought him a damn cowboy hat. <laughs> Don't ask me why, but he didn't shoot that up. You can't keep anything on him. Yeah, he's suited and booted, ready to go. He was suited and booted and ready for the game. So he want to be in here as we talk about what's going on in the WNBA with Kaitlyn Clark and why I believe that the rookie race is over. It's over. If you see her stat line, right? And you compare it to the next closest person to her, which obviously is Angel. They're trying to push this narrative of making this thing like it's a one-two fight between them. One person does great, the other one does great, right? They got them going against each other. Kaylin does not see it that way. Kaylin just going out there to ball. You do realize that she's come close to getting that triple-double record like three times before that. She could be easily averaging a triple-double. And guys, check it out. The record for triple-doubles in the WNBA is only nine. It's only nine. And that woman has got the record for a rookie, right, with a triple-double. She's the first ever rookie with a triple-double. And before she got this triple-double, she was on pace of getting that triple-double three times. Three times. So had she got it, let's play games of ifs and all this other shits, right? If she'd got that triple-double, she would have four triple-doubles. She would have half of what the record of triple-doubles is in the WNBA. Look, on a cool, if they let Caitlyn play like how she played this last game, y'all might want to start considering talking about her in the MVP race. Oh, no. This fool is tripping. I'm out of here. You on your own there, bro. Hold on. Pump your brakes. Slow down before you start throwing stuff at the screen. <laughs> and talking crazy. I ain't say winning the MVP race. I said in consideration of MVP. You know, it's like, what is it? Three or five people that they have uh, to choose from when they're choosing the MVP. So let's just say out of one to ten, Caitlin is in that one to ten. She is. Go look at her stats. She's 17th in points, right? Before she went on that terrible-ass slump of shooting. And before this team was not a cohesive unit, she had a poor shot percentage at, at, at what? It was like 32. She's brought that up now to 37. Her three-pointers were at 20. She didn't brought that up now. It's about 34, I believe. Everything has come up. So imagine if she was keeping that pace. She was ranked seventh at one point in scoring. She's averaging, she's number five in the, in the league with five pointers made. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Not attempted, made. Ranked five. She's ranked three in assist in the entire WNBA. 
She's ranked 14th in blocks. <laughs> she, Kaitlyn Clark, in the WNBA is ranked 14th in blocks. Think about what I'm saying, guys. And she's ranked 20th in steals. You don't think that that's a, a player that you could consider as one of the best in the WNBA with that stat line? You better not try to compare that shit to Angels. Angels only beating her in steals and rebounds. That is it. Every other stat, she is below her. And I'm talking about like 50th, 95th. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? Who is the better all-around player? Let's be honest. If you take rebounds away from Angel, what do you have? Now, let's talk about Kaitlyn. If you take away three-pointers from Kaitlyn, what do you have left? Come on. Which one has the most to offer? Angel has a weak jump shot. Her post game is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's decent. I, I think I need to, her work on her finish because she just tosses the ball up all crazy once she gets to the rim. But she's strong down there. She can move you. But after that, what is it? She, she's not great on assist. She's not great on defense. Like, she's way down there in blocks. When I talk about blocks, I think she's 50th in blocks. And she's a tall lady getting all those rebounds. But you are terrible on defense as far as blocks. Kaylin, Kaylin is ranked higher than you in blocks. How is that? And they talk all this stuff about Kaylin and her defense, but they don't say anything about Angel's defense. Why? Because you get a lot of defensive rebounds. That's why. But Kaylin is showing you right now these last four, four to five games that she had been almost averaging a triple-double. She's been averaging a double-double, guys. She's been averaging a double-double right now, quietly. And people didn't recognize that because they were looking for her to get the triple-double. This girl is breaking all these damn WNBA records right now. And it's really, really uh, ironic. When Sue Bird and Donna Tarasi opened their mouths up about her and how she wasn't going to pan out, she was not ready for this. Those girls are this and that and they're strong. How in the hell is it that she's doing what she's doing then in the WNBA? Y'all guys do realize it's been a thousand rookies in the WNBA that came before Kaitlyn Clark. And she's the first one to get a triple-double? Do y'all feel what I'm saying? She's the first one to get a triple-double? Look at Devontae. You just go take off the screen. Look, it's me. I'm Devontae. I just want to get some time with y'all. Look, he got an underbite. Y'all see it? It's weird. Anyway, <laughs> all them rookies came before this woman, and she's the first to do this? What does that tell you? She's really good. Why wasn't she this good in the beginning? Because of how the coach used her. If you look at this second half of play, right, over, the, over these last 20 games, how it started to change, how it was little by little that coach was giving Kaylin free reign. If small by small, if you if you've really been watching the games, but it happened. It happened. Guys, it was inevitable. You cannot stop a great person from being great. They will find a way. The person who's trying to hold them back will eventually crumble. They will allow it to happen because if they don't, guess what's going to happen to them? See, Kaylin never overstepped her boundaries with Coach Sides. Never outshine the master because the second that you do, that master will make your life a living hell. Kaylin never did it. You know what she did? She stayed humble. She took it on the chin whenever anything happened. I have to get better. This is what she said. As the coach over there was saying that my team has to get better. Coach Sides never took any of the damn blame of the shit that was going on out there. But Caitlin did. She never overstepped her boundaries. She never outshined coach sides. So in that situation, when you have an individual like coach sides who's limiting her, limiting her super her superstar, eventually somebody's gonna have to be brought in. See, we keep saying the GMs and all this other shit, but they don't know. How could they know? They lost a bunch of games last year. They don't know what they're doing, guys. They don't know what they have. They've never had anything like this before. It's the WNBA. This shit been over, here for over 23 years. Why hasn't it worked? When it's the same people who's all, who've been there. Shit doesn't work because it hasn't changed because the people in it hasn't changed. They haven't got the problem out. They haven't dug out the cancer. It's them and they need to interject new blood. 
Look, I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to go into a losing ass franchise and keep everybody there that's been losing. Are you serious? This is why I told y'all, this is why Dion, when he went to Colorado, he's like, hey, man, y'all can get y'all up out of here. Because y'all won one game last year. <laughs> y'all, I can see if y'all was a winning program that I just stepped into. Now my players have to compete with y'all for spots. But damn it, y'all, some of y'all are good to where y'all are. But not if you only won one game. You can't say shit to me. And last year, this team only won 13 games. 13 games this team won last year. And at this point, they've already won nine. Or is it 10? I think it might be 10. I think, they, I think they're 10 and 13. They won 10 games already, guys. They three games away from tying their record of what they won last year. They were 13 and 27. Get out of here, Devontae. I got to get serious with y'all real quick. Hold on, Devontae. You might want to cover your ears for all this shit. I'm about to start saying, listen, guys, that team was sorry as hell last year. And you want to try to run the same shit again, Coach Sides? Limiting your super superstar? Taking the ball out of her hands? Not protecting her? Are you serious? That is your primary asset. And you blowing it. And you blowing it because the higher ups are blowing it too because they don't know what to do with it. This league has been around for years. Decades. Decades this year. This league has been here. And they can never get the shit right. And they already almost gave you with the F-bomb. And they screwing this part up too. They are screwing this shit up. I told you. It's a layup. Ain't that right, Devontae? <laughs> Look, okay, Devontae. I need you to go for just a second. It's a layup. And they are screwing this shit up. It's been given to them. And they still don't want to take care of the asset. In instead, they want to shit on it. Instead, they want to say, no, our product has always been good. You guys just didn't see it. Guys, y'all just wasn't looking. No, we wasn't looking because it wasn't good. And we started looking because somebody who did we know is good came to the product. That's Caitlin Dope. That's right there that everybody's smoking. That's, that's what that is. This, is. this is too easy, guys. Caitlin is the reason for all of this shit. They don't want to give it to her. She doing way too much for somebody that they say they're not supposed to be doing nothing at all. She doing way too much all the shit that she done broken. She done broke Danny Taurasi's record for average points and assists as a rookie. She done, bro she, she done broke Sue Bird's record for points and assists double-doubles as a rookie. First woman in the league to get a damn triple-double as a rookie. Has the franchise record for most assists in the game for Fever. What are y'all even talking about? Yes, this woman should be talked about soon for MVP ca uh, candidate. Because if she does anything remotely close, and that I know she is going to do, guys, watch. This is it. You could not hold this shit back. She's gaining confidence. Her team is starting to believe in her. Do y'all see the press conferences now? Boston and Kayla look like they're a little bit more buddy-buddy than where they were in the beginning. That You could tell, look, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a behavior guy. I'm a behavior psychologist guy. That's what I'm working for. Look. Look at how distant they were, right? You can tell by people how they behave. You can tell by posture, body. Look at how they look at how they look at each other. The words when they speak about each other. When Caitlyn, when they was everybody giving her praise, Boston was like, "Oh, she's just a humble, she's just a humble little girl." And it it seemed genuine. They seemed like they were becoming genuine partners, and it 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 had to become, it had to be. Because the Mitchell and Boston was not it. The Mitchell and Boston only won 13 games. The Kalen and Boston right now have 10 games won. And I think they got like 18 games left. And they moved into seventh place in the WNBA. Look, say whatever the hell you want to say. Talk, talk, talk. But the people that talk crazy are missing out on greatness. The people who talked crazy about LeBron James missed out on the fact that this man scored 40,000 points and the way he scored 40,000 points, his athleticism, your hate, right? Your hate for something will blind you, literally blind you to the world and what those people can do. Mitchell didn't like Caitlin. She did not like giving up that spot, but guess what happened? She had to. And look at what happened when the ball runs through Caitlin. Caitlin looks for Mitchell. 
Mitchell has been big. I'm talking, she's been coming up big in these last third quarter games. I mean, in, uh, last, yeah, in the last uh, games in the fourth quarter. She's been coming up big. That was a big time three she hit. Lexi started everything off, though. Lexi, oh, Lexi with the layup, the crazy looking ass layup she did. When they was down, it was 75 to 67. 75 to 67. When Hull hit that layup, jumped up 69. Then Caitlin came down. And she did something that I hadn't seen her do in a WNBA. She didn't pass the ball. She kept it. She sized up her defender. She backed her ass down, took it to the rim, scored, and won. Hit the free throw. 72. The score is 72 to 75. They went on a run. Kaitlyn, rebound. And guess what happened? Fast break. Because that's Caitlin's basketball. That's how she plays. Fast break. You got Mitchell. One of the, she's got to be the first or second fastest person on that damn team. Because as soon as I looked up after Caitlin got that damn rebound, Mitchell had sprinted out and she was already in position for the three. She can shoot. She's a great spot up shooter. This is how she's supposed to play. She's supposed to play like Clay Thomas. She's supposed to play like Clay. She ran that bitch down there, pass, boom. Guess what happened? Splash. Tie game. Tie game. All the, way, all the way back they came when they played as a team. I know all the people out there, they was down. They was down by 10. They came back in the fourth. That team did this shit. That is a confidence booster. Everybody looked like they ready to play right now. And with Timmy not playing and they still won, that's what y'all not paying attention to as well. Timmy has been a, a, a monster since coming back. She's been averaging eight points and five rebounds. They need shit like that. They need it. And she was out with a thumb injury, guys, and they still won. Say what you want to say. They beat the best team in the WNBA. And I, and I told y'all, I know it's anybody's night. Any given Sunday, like how they say, right? But it was day night. And with Inascu ass over there talking about what well, Sabrina talking about, oh, this was a Super Bowl. What you mean? This is a Super Bowl. So you're trying to tell me that you are the top Super Bowl contender and they the ones that got to play against you? You know you're talking about a team that's not sorry. People say people say stuff about teams like that that just are trash. Because they will never get to a Super Bowl. That's what they're trying, that's what she's saying. Whether you know it or not, oh, this they'll never get there. So this is like the Super Bowl for them. Well, guess what? They won a Super Bowl. You're not supposed to win that game. When it's somebody's Super Bowl, they ain't supposed to win. Are you kidding me? They beat y'all. Not only did they beat y'all, you dropped 22. Everybody scored like they normally score, guys. I'm sorry. I looked at the stat line. Bri Brianna is uh, 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 Stewart. She averages 18 points a game. And Oscar averages 16. Laney Smith averages 12. Jack Quill averages 10. They all average double digits. And guess what? They all got their points. It's just that they didn't do anything more than what they averagely, that they do average wise. You see, the team got held to the averages, guys. We're going to wrap this up 18 minutes. If y'all make it to the end of this thing, I want y'all to give me a uh, hootie hoo. That shit is whack. <laughs> Why y'all let me say that shit, guys? You know what? Uh, give me an ace boogie. Give me an ace boogie. Y'all should know why. It, it, just figure it out. If you make it all the way to the end of this video, put ace boogie in the comments. You should know why. If you look around. I ain't going to give y'all no more clues. Screw all that. But we're going to wrap this thing up. Caitlin Clark right now should be considered in, in MVP talks because of the way she's playing. And she's been great. She's been great, guys, over the last five games. They held strong on day five game road trip they finished six and four six and four out of the last 10 games they played they beat the mercury who got for oh, three olympians on their team they beat the liberty who have two olympians on their team now they lost to to the aces and they were holding strong in that first. Is that they crumbled. They crumbled in the fourth. They looked they, like they were tired. But I believe that they can give the Aces a run for their money too. Because they was up. The Fever right now, they're a problem. And they're, this is why they're a problem. If they up going into the second half, they, the chances of them winning, bro, are exponentially higher than them losing. 
because they had two quarters to figure this shit out. By the time you get into the third quarter, you got your game plan. But I got my game plan. I'm behind. So my game plan isn't working. The FIBA's game plan worked. It was a great game. Great effort from everybody. I appreciated that game. I was on the edge of my seat, man. I was screaming. I was going crazy. <laughs> That's the crazy I ever went for a WNBA game in my life. God, we talking about the WNBA. <laughs> we talking about the WNBA. And you know what? It ain't bad. It ain't bad. And Kaylin, great job. 19 points, 13 rebounds. Uh, shit, 13 assists too? Or were you 10 assists? It don't, it didn't even matter. She got the triple-double, guys. And I, I said it. If you, you heard it here first. Did, did you? I don't know. But I've been saying that she was going to get that damn triple double. She kept flirting with it. Go look at all my other videos. I've been telling you. I've been saying it. And look, if you if, if you if you knew, because wrapping this thing up, if you knew, because I got other videos out there talking about all these things that have been happening right now. I'll tell you, man, I'm the guru. I'm guru. Chocolatey guru. <laughs> guru chak. I don't, guru chaka. There we go. Guru chaka. But I said it. And it's happening. It's here. If you knew, you can go check them videos out, man. Hey. Subscribe to the channel. Chocolatey plays. Do that for your boy. If you if you're new, if you new, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Right? Hit that notification button so you know when your boy drop videos like this and when I go live. Cause I've been I went live a couple days ago and it was fun. We're gonna do it again, guys. The game is early this week. The game come on at 11 o'clock in the morning on a damn Wednesday. Who the hell they think is at home watching these games? Grandmas and grandpas? They they wrong for this shit. The people want to watch these games, guys. I know it's, and the kids, well, the kids at home for the summertime, but all their damn parents ain't there with them. Y'all wrong for this shit. Why y'all put these damn games on during soap opera time? Y'all wrong. This ain't no damn game show. I'm, I'm, I just, I had to, I had to let that out just for that second, guys. Look, thank y'all. Thank y'all for rocking with your boy. Remember what I said in that damn chat? Ace Boogie. Hey, y'all, I love y'all, man. I appreciate y'all and all the support that y'all give. It's, y'all don't know how it warms my heart. It does. It really does. But thank y'all so much. I guess that's it, man. <laughs> I guess that's it. Peace.